Welcome to Mossy Meadow Farm. Today we're going to learn how to make an herbal infused oil. And I'm not just talking any herbal infused oil, I'm talking super potent, let's call it double strength, herbal oil. Let's get started. herbal oils that aren't super potent. Um, they still contain active properties, so I'm not knocking them. And to be honest, I have made them just like that for years and years. Um, but I was introduced to these stronger herbal oils by a lady named Cammie McBride. So if you wanna take her herbal oil course, you can. I will link um, her webpage below. She's the one who taught me how to make these extra double strength um, herbal oils. So what you're going to need is, of course, your carrier oil, which in this case I have avocado. You can also use olive oil or sunflower oil or sesame oil, fractionated coconut oil, pretty much any form of liquid vegetable oil. So your call, you choose. Pick your own story adventure. <laughs> you are also going to need, of course, your herb of choice, and today we're going to be working with chamomile. Some other great options would be calendula, um, arnica, comfrey, lavender. Those would be all make amazing herbal oils. You are also going to need vodka. Yeah, I'm not kidding. You need it. <laughs> Not to drink, but for your herbal oil. Um, you can either use, I'm using, today I'm using Everclear. Um, so, very strong alcohol. <laughs> or if you don't have Everclear, can't get Everclear, don't worry about it, don't sweat it. Um, you can also just use regular 80 proof vodka. That works as well. Um, the reason you're going to be using vodka, and this again was one of my big eye openers um, that Cammie McBride taught me was at your, before you add your oil to your herbs, you're going to add the vodka. And the vodka helps extract the properties out of the herbs. Because basically, when you add oil, a lot of the times the herbs are sitting in the oil and they're thinking, what the heck do I do now? <laughs> you know how we extract, extract herbs into water that extracts very, very easily. But the active constituents don't always extract very easily into oil. So allowing the vodka to extract the properties out of the herb and then it can extract easier into the oil, if that makes sense. <laughs> if you have any questions, let me know um, in the comments. So that's pretty much the ingredients you need. Those three things and you can make your herbal infused oil. Other things that you're going to need is definitely a scale. You know how big I am on weighing ingredients, makes everything way more accurate, way more consistent. So definitely get your digital scale. Um, I also like my magic bullet. Personally, it's just easy to handle. It's easier to clean than a big blender. But if you have a blender, go ahead and use a blender. Whatever you have, you shouldn't have to go out and really buy too much equipment for this. Oh, I forgot one very important thing we need. Hold on, a mason jar. Whatever size you decide that you're going to need, um, depending on how much oil you're going to make. Today I'm going to be using a pint-sized um, mason jar. You're also gonna need the lid to go with it. Last thing you're gonna need, dun, dun, dun. this makes it so much easier, you guys. A yogurt maker, not even kidding. A little yogurt maker. This is going to gently heat our oil as it helps extract the um, nutrients or the beneficial constituents from the herbs into the oil and it's the right temperature so you're not going to fry your herbs. Um, it just makes it so much easier. If you don't have that, you can always use other methods. I've tried the crock pot method and I fried herbs. The crock pot doesn't stay, um, it gets too hot. So that was a fail. Um, you could actually try, you know what else would work is a dehydrator. If you have a dehydrator, you can set it to about 100 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. 
that's what a yogurt maker is at, is at 110 degrees. Um, so a dehydrator would also work. So here we go. First, what you're going to do, I'm gonna give you a bonus tip. If you ever need to sanitize your equipment quickly and you don't have time to run through the dishwasher or use other methods of sanitization, this is my cheater's method. I fill a little spray bottle, spray bottle with Everclear. Yes, with Everclear. And I spray my little containers. Seriously, kills it, sanitizes it. Um, and again, why do I sanitize? I want my herbal oils to last as long as possible and making sure that there's no bad bacteria, no bad microbes. It's just good practice to sanitize your equipment before using it. Um, so after you spray it, just let it air dry. Usually air dries pretty quickly. Okay, they're dry. So now what we're gonna do, first up, I'm gonna take my chamomile, dried, this is dried chamomile. I personally really only use dried herbs for making herbal infused oils. Um, certain herbs you can use fresh, but that is too large of a scope for today's video. So today we're going with dried. So I have one ounce by weight. I already weighed this out. This is one ounce of dried chamomile. So I'm putting it in here. And then what we do is we're gonna blend this up. So it can be tricky because it's a dry material. It doesn't always blend very well. So we're gonna do a little shaky shaky and very finely, very carefully blend this. So let's go. So you see how I'm just kind of shaking it around and aerating it to get every little last piece um, blended? Just keep doing that until you have a fine powder. Different herbs can be trickier. Um, calendula is a little trickier. Um, chamomile actually blends pretty well. There we go, done. That is again why I like the Magic Bullet personally, um, because it's easy to shake like that. Uh, using an, an actual blender, not as easy. Okay, so now that this is finely ground up, you're gonna dump it into your mason jar. And you know what else I forgot? Hold on one second. A knife or some sort of thin stirring stick um, you could use a chopstick, you could use a spoon. Um, something with less surface area is better though. Um, so today I just grabbed a knife. All right, so we have that, the chamomile in our jar. Now you're gonna take your little shot of vodka. Again, I already measured this. Oh, I didn't tell you how much of this. My bad. Measurements for this, you guys. Remember I said we were gonna measure? So what you're gonna need is your one ounce of dried herb to a half of an ounce by volume of vodka and seven ounces by volume of your vegetable carrier oil. So we're gonna take our one ounce of dried herb, you're going to add your half of an ounce of vodka and then you're gonna mix, mix it up. And it's not gonna be you don't want it to be wet. You don't want it to be saturated. You just want it to be a little damp. So that looks about perfect. Depending on, again, your material that you're using for the herb, you might need a little more or a little less vodka, um, but you kind of learn as you go. Then what you do? I know patience, you guys. Get ready, because you're gonna need some patience. Put your lid on. <laughs> Get a clean lid, but for demonstration purposes, using this lid, put your lid on and then you let it sit. I generally let it sit for about eight, eight hours overnight. Um, I don't know, anywhere from eight to 12 hours is pretty good. Um, but you're letting the active constituents in the herb extract into the vodka. So hence, you need to let it sit. So set that aside for overnight and then we're gonna come back and add the carrier oil. You've let your vodka and herb infuse overnight or for eight to 12 hours. And now it is time to add the carrier oil. So again, 
I've already weighed this out. This is seven ounces by volume of period oil. This is avocado again. So then pour it in. Take your little stirring equipment and mix it all up to make sure all of the herb is saturated by the oil. Okay, okay, and important, important, important. Label this. Label it with the herb that's in it and the oil that it's in and the date that you started it. So I'm going to put that this is chamomile and avocado oil and put today's date. Okay, then it's time to wait for a couple more days. But this time you're going to put it in your yogurt maker. So I'm gonna stick it in there, I'm gonna plug it in, and I'm going to let it sit for the next three days. Whenever you think about it and you go into your kitchen, give it a good shake. Because agitation helps to extract all of the active constituents in the herb. So just shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, and then put it back in. And let it keep infusing into the perfect temperature of the yogurt maker. So that's it. Now I'm gonna let this sit for two to three days. More if you forget about it. I do that all the time. <laughs> it won't hurt it. Um, and then after those couple of days, you're going to strain off your material. I'm gonna show you that next because I did a little experiment here. This is, this is my calendula that I did last and I just use old cut up kitchen towels and shove it in there. And this is how I do it, super easy. Pour it in there and then I just take it and I squeeze to get all of it out. Okay, so that's how I easily strain off my oil. Now, if you give me a minute, I'll come back and I'm gonna strain off that one really quick and then I will show you the difference between these oils and how much stronger that one. Check this out, you guys. Do you see how much darker this one is? It's even staining my fingers. Like this is strong oil. This is potent herbal infused oil. So get all, all, all that deliciousness out. Ooh, that's gonna be good. Ooh la la, look at that color. Okay, so this is the difference. You see this? Check that out. I'm gonna give you guys a close up um, to see the difference. So here is a close up of the calendula oil. And I just wanted to show you the strength of this. So this one right here, this is sunflower oil that's just straight from the bottle. So this one, nothing has been added to it. It's just the color of sunflower oil before we infuse the oil. So I just want to show you that so you knew what it first started like. And then this is the calendula infused sunflower oil that is the traditional method. And this is the beautiful dark color of the calendula oil that was used, that was created by using the method that I showed you in this video. So check that difference out. I mean, you can clearly see that there is more nutrients and more um, active constituents in using that method. So there you go, the difference, one, two, and three. And there you have it, herbal infused oil. Mmm, it's so good. <laughs> so good for your skin. Um, this has so many amazing beneficial properties in it. So if you want to learn, like I said, more about how to use your herbal oils and other herbs that you can use to create your herbal oils, go ahead and check out the blog post below. And in the meantime, get oily. <laughs> now I gotta figure out how to clean up this mess. Ah! <laughs>